joint for sex <laughs> going on YouTube? Mark Villarreal here once again. This is the second time we come out here for Catan, for Alligator Gar. And we are going to try to get us another monster today. We're going to try to give you all some more demonstration videos on how to, what gear to use, how to put the bait, different rigs, you name it. We're going to try to have a lot of information for you all in today's video. So before I continue, do not forget to hit that subscribe button everyone. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button because we're bringing tons of action for you all. We're going to try to bring a lot of awesome videos your way and i want to give a big and special shout out to attorney rene a flores as always he is the man reach out to him for all your legal needs a big shout out to mr flores now let's get today's day started all right so we're going to be fishing i'm going to be using a float an lcd 956 float all right and uh, my partners are going to be using bottom leaders so basically we're gonna put some fresh bait. We have some tilapia. Let's see what we got. We caught it right here in the in the in the in the canal that we're at. We got some fresh tilapia for you all. So y'all can see fresh tilapia. We're gonna rig it up. We're gonna see if we can catch something awesome, something huge. Alright, so what are we gonna do now? We're gonna get our baits ready, we're gonna get our rigs ready, we're gonna cast out. We're going to try to bring some awesome action for you all. All right. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned. All right, everyone. So we're going to start our fishing adventure. As you can see, I have an LCD 956 float. Remember, if you want to get your hands on some floats, visit LCD956BaitAndTackle.com. I will put the link below. You can see it right here. LCD956BaitAndTackle.com. You get yourself on some awesome leaders. We specialize in alligator guard leaders and various leaders as well. You can also go online and check out various retailers close to your area, perhaps. So anyway, I'm using a float, like I said before. It's a double treble float, and I'm using a Bait Runner 8000D Shimano Live Liner. This is the kind of rig that I'm using. I'm using 50 pound braided line, ultimate cast. Remember, you do not need heavy line. A lot of people like using a 100 pound test line. You don't need that stuff, all right? I'm gonna show you what 50 pounds can do. Hopefully, hopefully I can show you what 50 pounds can do. So anyway, do not forget to visit our website, lcd956baitandtackle.com. Get your gear, get loaded up, and go out there and catch yourself some monsters as well. So let's get started, all right? I'm gonna get my rig ready. I'm gonna get me a nice fresh piece of bait. I want to get the perfect size. I'm going to use this one. I'm going to use this fresh tilapia. I'm going to do a little trick that my friend Cesar Mesa um, showed me. This is what he does. He cuts off the, 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 the fin on the top. He cuts it off. And I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why. You know exactly what he told me. And it makes a lot of sense. This is the way he fishes. This works for him. Just be careful when you're when you're cutting this dorsal fin. That's what it is. You cut out, you cut off the dorsal fin, and there you, there it is. All right, all right. So the reason why Mr. Cesar Mesa said, you know what, Mark, this is why I do this. He says that because when the gars, most of the time the gar eat the tilapia head first, which is true, and the dorsal fin sometimes kind of gets stuck this way. It is it is not in the way, and it can slide straight down his mouth like this his throat there you go so we're gonna try this trick wish us the best of luck so let's go ahead and put our hook on there all right remember do not forget to hit that subscribe button and if you need any uh, fishing gear come by McAllen Texas or message me reach out to me um, on our website at lcd 956 tacklecom you have my email you have my phone number you can reach out to me and uh, if you want to get your hands on some gear we have it we have rod reels leaders everything we even carry bait our headquarters is in McAllen, texas all right so let's go ahead and put our hooks i'm going to put one in the head because that's a nice solid area i'm going to put one hook there and i'm going to put if the hook lets me i'm going to grab it and i'm going to put it on here oh this is good right here remember your hook your hook has to go from side 
two sides. You see how it went in this side and it came out this side? Make sure it goes all the way through that barb where the hook is because that's what's gonna secure your bait in place, all right? So, we have our bait ready. Now, I'm using this float. There is a lot of current where we're at. I'm using this float right here and I'm putting a weight on the top. Basically, this is gonna help us because when we cast our bait, it's going to, um, when we cast our bait, it's going to, it's gonna float in place. It's gonna stay in place because this weight's gonna sink down and your float's gonna sink up just like I demonstrated in my past videos. Your sinker's gonna go down, your float's gonna go up, so it's going to stay in place and we're gonna see where our bait is and when it's running, we'll be able to follow it with our eyes. Let's go ahead and cast the bait out. Perfect. If you can see that I landed on the bank, that's where we want it. We want it right on the bank. So the sinker fell down and the float stayed in place. So once we already did that, we're gonna activate our live liner. This is your live liner, like I demonstrated in the video before. We're gonna activate our live liner and it's ready to go. So when the guard comes, it's gonna take it, take it, take it. And we wanna set that hook. We uh, deactivate the live liner to activate the top drag and we're gonna set our hook we're gonna give it our hook set all right so wish us the best of luck let's demonstrate some more rigs for you all and see what else we can do and hopefully we catch some kata all right everyone so we're demonstrating how to use our single treble leaders as you can see jesus is placing the hook he put one hook out of the three on one side and he passed it all the way through so as you can see we're using the lcd 956 bottom treble leaders you have your sinker there, you have your LCD 956 liter, and you have your bait ready to go. So that is the LCD 956 single treble liter. Let's go ahead and uh, have him cast his bait. Calmadito, slowly, so it doesn't go all the way to the bushes, just calmly. Stop it. Right there. There you go. So, perfect cast, right on the edge. We're gonna wait for that monster now. He's gonna go ahead and uh, put it in the rod holder. And we're gonna hold the pole real good. We're gonna check the drag, hold it. The drag is perfect. Now we're gonna loosen it. Since this is not a live liner, when you're not using a live liner system, there's two ways you can do it. You can, you can loosen your drag here, or you can open your spool, but since we have uh, pretty strong current here we're gonna loosen the drag and wait for it to take it all right so we have Edgar setting up his pole and uh, what kind of leader are you using Edgar I'm using a double treble he's using an LCD 956 double treble bottom leader everyone and your weight uh, it's a three ounce weight it's a three ounce egg weight egg weight all right and he knotted his uh, his leader. He's gonna cut his excess slack. You already know it as LCD 956 Canaleros. We have our awesome bubble blades. You can find them at the LCD 956 store as well. Everything you see, you can find there. Even bait, even bait. All right, so now let's see what kind of bait Edgar's gonna use. Let's check our poles while he gets ready. There's Jesus's pole on the left. There's my pole on the right. Edgar's using a um, Finor 80 bait runner. These are available at the LCD 956 bait and tackle and it's a beef stick, Daiwa beef stick rod. Perfect blue on blue with black on black. So Edgar's choosing his uh, bait now. Let's see what he's gonna get. This is perfect, right? So he chose himself a tilapia. So he's placing his hook. Remember, you gotta make sure that hook goes all the way through. There you go. And there goes the second hook. And 
and he is ready to go. Yeah. So he's gonna cast in between these two, um, these two poles. It went a little close to the bank. He just uh, decided to pull it out a little bit from the from the edge. And he activated his live liner. There you go. All right, everyone. So let's see if we catch anything. Okay, so we've been here about 10 minutes and we're getting the first run. I'm gonna loosen up my, my live liner a little bit and we're gonna go ahead and try to get this fishing pole up. So let me show you. So as you see, it's running, right? The pole is running. So what I like to do is get it off of the rod holder and point it towards the direction where it's running. Because if you can see, it's running like that. Look how the rod's placed. Right now it's running. The, the tip will be um, bouncing and the alligator gar, he can feel the tip bouncing. So what I like to do is take it off the rod holder and point it straight to where it's running like that. It can run straight without no bouncing. So remember, you want to give it some slack. You give it some slack and then you pick it up. That way the guard doesn't feel you picking up that pole. Because if he feels you, you're risking him to not like that little movement and spit out the hook. So the guard's running and now he's running straight and the pole's not like this anymore. Now the pole is facing the direction where he's running and it's just non-stop running. As soon as I think he starts uh, eating the bait, swallowing it, I will set the hook. Check it out. So, uh, a lot of questions that I get is how long do you, do you let it run? How long do I let it run? It all varies. Every guard does a different movement. Not all guards do the same thing. But me personally, I like to give it some time. When I start feeling the line, instead of just keep on going, it's going to start going like zzz, zzz, zzz. Or you start feeling taps on the line. I, my imagination starts going crazy and I think that the guard is um, swallowing it. That's why it's, you know, that's why he, he, he keeps on... Uh, bouncing the line that's when i think he's kind of eating it a little bit after that i set my hook but i always set my gar on the run i never set my i always set the hook on the run i never set my hook when the when it stops running it's always on the run all right when i set my hook i activate my live liner and i wait for the line to stretch 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 and then i set my hook the reason why i let the line stretch because I, I want to make sure there's enough tension for me to get that hook set. Because if I set the hook right away as soon as I tighten my line and I go right away. Chances are you're going to do a spaghetti line hook set. That's what I call spaghetti line hook set. What that means is that your, your line is loose and you, you set your hook and your line is spaghetti line. You know. Rather than letting it stretch, 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 stretch. Build tension and then you pull. He's been running for a long time. I don't want him to run too far. So I'm going to take my chances. I'm going to take my chances and try to set the hook. Once I push the live liner, once I activate the live liner, or once I deactivate the live liner and activate my top drag, I will tell if it's a katan. I'll feel the stretch. So let's do it. Now I don't feel much of a stretch. So what I think it was, it was maybe debris that was floating in the in the canal. It might have been debris. That's what happens. That's why when I said I'm gonna uh, deactivate my live liner and I'm gonna feel to see a gar. If it's a gar, he's gonna stretch that line. Once you deactivate your live liner, he's gonna stretch that line. Debris is not gonna stretch. It'll stop and it'll just stop running. It, you won't stretch. You not feel the pull. So, uh, more likely it was debris. So just a little heads up between the difference between alligator gar running and debris taking your, your leader. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it out so I can get that debris out and I'm gonna recast, all right? So stay tuned. All right, everyone, so um, the float was not working for me today. So we're gonna switch off leaders. I put a double treble, but a bottom. Double treble bottom, that means no float. And the hooks are a little smaller. So I cut a tilapia in half 
And this is a little trick I learned from a, an old man to expose these gills. I think the alligator guards love to see that red or something. So here's another little tip trick for you all. Expose those gills for the gar. See how I cut off the head? Now you have the exposure of the gills. Now we're gonna go ahead and bait our hooks. I'm gonna wash my hands and then we're gonna cast it out. Remember, do not, try not to uh, grab your fishing pole after you cut bait because it's just gonna mess it up and make it look ugly. So take care of your stuff, you know. So I don't know if I'm gonna throw downstream or upstream. I'm gonna try upstream. get the view from back there. All right, so we're gonna try our luck downstream, or no, upstream, against the current. That's where I threw. The other two fishing poles are with the current. I'm against the current. And then we're gonna see how it goes from there. Alright everyone, we have a, a run. It's been a couple hours already, but we got a solid run. So this isn't a, a live liner, so I have to walk forward, tighten the drag, and then retrieve back. So let's go ahead and do that. See, so walk forward. Tighten the drag. Yeah. Don't mess it up, Jesus. Slowly, 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 slowly. There you go. Slowly. He's big. Hey, I will, I will, hey, Mark. You like all this? Eh? You like all lasso, no? Por la There you go, bring him in smoothly. Let him, let him, bring him in smoothly. Ten, ten, ten. I'm gonna get in. Get the lasso ready. See on? Yeah, I see no mass. Exactly how you're going. Real smooth. It's all right. Bring him in smoothly. If he decides to um to pull, let him pull. Don't pull against him. If he starts pulling, you're gonna let him pull. I have the gancho. The lasso's right here. This is my first guy in South Texas. Yes. There's uh, already a loop on the on the other end. Give me the spotlight. There you go. Give me the spotlight. You're gonna you're gonna pass this loop. You're gonna loop it around the you're gonna loop oh, it yeah, around yeah, the guard. Yeah, I get you. So yeah. Edgar says he wants to lasso the gar. So let's come over here. Mm -hmm. Just don't go too much into the water, just right here on the edge. Get some good video. Hey, Sus, I'm gonna tell you what to do. I'm gonna come down here so I can help him a little bit. Slowly. It'd be better if you can go around the bushes. You're gonna bring him close to him if he starts, like, if he starts. If he starts okay, running away, this. if he starts running away, I need you to let him run. Don't pull against him for me. Watch out, I'm going down. 
Let me go down here so I can help you. There you go. I want to be in the water. He's right there. He's, he's a pretty good size. He's not like uh, super big, but he's a pretty good size. So perfect to lasso. He's like almost three feet. He's not that big. Get in. Don't worry about it. You go in. Go in. <clears throat> Slowly, don't pull the don't pull the, the leader too hard because if he pulls, he can come off. So don't pull the leader. Reel him in a little bit, Jesus. Reel him in a little bit slowly. No, no, no. You have to open up the loop. You have to open up the loop. There you go. Let him run. You have to open up the loop, and then you have to pass his head through there. Reel it in slowly, Jesus. Slowly, slowly, slowly. No, 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 don't get the wire, don't get the wire. No, no, watch out with the hook. Watch out with the hook, watch out with that rama. Watch out with the hook, watch out with the ramas because they're going to be in the way of you lashing it. You have to make sure it's clear. Get those uh, twigs out of the way. Those twigs are in the way. Why isn't it through the hook? You did it wrong. All oh, the ramas are in the way, Karna. No, 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 no. Oh, you can do there. You can do that. There you go. S smoothly. Now I have to go behind the gills. Behind the gills. Move all that shit out of the way. Right there. Be careful. Watch, hold on, hold on. You got him, go back, go back. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Oh, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Here, get the... Get the go. Look. Huh? 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 Like a three footer, not that grande, but perfect. Perfect. Hold this. Hold this. Here. Take a time. See that? Yeah. LCD 956 liters. Check it out, everyone. First guard of the night. Ooh. Alright, you got it. Oh, it's my line. Hold on. There. Take off the spotlight. Turn it off. There's too much light on the ground. See the pool? Fishing pool? Okay. Alright everyone, so this is uh, Jesus's gar that he caught and Edgar is going to demonstrate how to clean the gar. So let's go ahead and start.
just needs to get a good start and then he'll take it straight through. It's his first time cleaning a gar. And he's demonstrating and learning at the same time himself. So let's see how it goes. What happened to the pliers you had found? Uh, no way. Probably just take it. There you go. Careful. Oh. Remember not to dig in too much in the meat either. Careful. There you go, Just take it straight through. Don't point the knife up so it doesn't cut the, the skin. And don't point it too much down, just take it straight in between the skin and the meat. There you go, just like that, all the way through. So this is the first time everybody so after watching and uh after watching so many times how, how i do it and and stuff he's taking it and doing it on his own all right so you took off the top uh shell yeah what are you gonna do now the knife came in. here Yeah, remember try not to puncture the skin too much. There you go. So this was the result of tonight's fishing trip. This is the alligator gar that uh, Jesus caught. And um, Edgar is uh, cleaning it off. So let's see how it goes. There you go. Has a soft spot there, so there you go. There you go. You see that everyone? For his first time. 
Los Canaleros de 956. Always. This is the way we do it, everyone. There you go. You know, just be careful with this with the meat. Try not to point the knife up to the meat. So you can save a lot of meat as you can. There you go. There you go. Are you going past it? So what you do to one side, you do to the other side. You got, like uh, we've shown you all before. Remember, this is his first time doing this.
Remember when practice makes perfect. Um, it's not hard. You just have to get the hang of, of uh, cleaning a gar. And believe me, the more practice you have, the more perfect you will be. So as you can see, um, his second side is coming out along a lot better than his first side. You know, sometimes if you need to take your time, you take your time just to get it right. You know, you take your time and you do everything calmly with no rush. You will be very, very pleased with the work you do. See that everyone? Practice makes perfect. So we caught this beautiful gar. We caught it a little late. It is about uh, two in the morning, maybe three. And we are cleaning this gar so we can uh, go ahead and harvest it and Um, to be able to enjoy it in a fish fry. So he's cutting off the tail. And he's gonna cut that bottom uh, dorsal fin or that bottom fin, he's, it has a bone there so he's going to cut it so he can free this, the body. There you go, awesome. So he's cutting that uh, bottom bone so he can free the body off of the skin. Remember, this is where you gotta put your machete, your cleaver, whatever you're using, this is where you have to put it in play also. Almost through there you go, there you go. You got one more little bone there. Perfect. Come on, you're almost there. Almost there. There you go, right there. Almost there, just one little bit there. Come on, come on. There you go. And there he has it. So now he's going to go ahead and finish it off with the, the sharp fillet knife. Everything else should be soft. So you're just going to take a long there you go right there perfect perfect
There you go, got that little bone there. Perfect, so he worked around that one. He has two bones, now he has to go, now from there he has to go straight down. Straight down. There you go. So you got past all the bones. There you go. So he's gonna butterfly the skin. He's gonna butterfly that skin. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. We do one side, you do it to the other. You see, it's for his first time, he's doing an excellent job. He learned so much and he's getting the hang of it. I'm sure his next car is gonna be a lot, a lot easier. I call it butterfly because you're um, practically opening up the, the skin in a wing type. The shell I should say, not the skin but the shell. There you go. Now he's gonna have to uh, he's gonna have to um, slice more with his knife. All the way to the top but make sure you, you get as much meat as you can. There you go. There you go. Perfect, right there. So what you do to one side, you do to the other. You have to make sure you get as much skin off of that shell as possible. Or meat off of that scale, I'm sorry. There you go. So now he's going to cut the neck area he's gonna cut straight down to the bone and then he has to make sure he he de, 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 he, he gets as much down here as much off as possible to the bone straight up there you go because down there you're gonna have to cut up in the bone in order for that bone to pop you got to get as much meat as possible off of that shell in the bottom in the bottom and the way bottom there you go there you go make sure you get as much skin as possible you have to make a nice cut all the way around his neck and then you crack it so this is the bloodiest part right here as you can see so Now he's gonna crack it. Oh yeah, up. There you go. Now you can uh, either cut that or twist off. And use your your knife so you can cut off all the. Alright, so separate your, your meat from your, pick up that uh, shell with that head so they can see what you did. Look at that everyone for his first time. He did an awesome job. Remember, practice makes perfect. And I guarantee you, and I put my money on everything that he will do a better job as he goes. This is his first guard clean with uh, little or no help. Edgar did an excellent job. So we're going to go ahead and put that back in the water so the fish can go ahead and eat. There you go. So wash your hands off. Now let's take off all the insides and all the guts from that gar. There you go. There you go. So 
So he started off and then he just started peeling to the top. Awesome, awesome job. So let's go ahead and throw that to the fish. Let's feed the fish. Perfect. Washing his hands. Going back over here. Now he's going to go ahead and uh, debone the meat. So what he's doing, he's feeling that bone in the center so you can know where he's going to start. Um, Separating the the meat from the bone So he's gonna go along the bone as you can see he's going along the bone all the way down So he's filleting his his gar Some people fillet it most of us do Here at Los Canaleros 956 most of us we uh, fillet our gar some people cut them in steaks with the bone Because that is one delicious meat with the bone So as he cuts down, he should be able to feel the bone where it curves down so he can separate that meat from the bone. There you go. Perfect. There you go. So when you get to the bottom part, you should be able to feel the curve down where it goes under and out the curve. And it's almost done with that part. There you go. Perfect, there you go, go along the bone and then you're gonna see how, how far you have to cut and you will see how far down the bone goes. There you go. Perfect, perfect. There you go, right there. Just what you were doing, you're gonna take it all the way up and do the same thing you did in the bottom. So that's the first slab. Let's see what you cut, Edgar. Show us the whole slab that you got. That's one side he got. He deboned that like a pro. 
So he's gonna go ahead and do the other side. That was weird. I think a fish just came and ate some of that gar that we just put back in the water. So it is a small tender gar, so it doesn't have much uh, uh, belly meat. It does have some, but it doesn't have much, as you can tell right here. It has some, it does not have much, but it's still something though. It's meat. Perfect. It's a little messy guys, but after a good rinsing, it's gonna be white meat whiter than white There you have it everyone, that's the second slab. Look at that beautiful tender meat. Awesome, awesome meat. Super delicious, it's gonna be very, very delicious. Now the belly meat. Yep. So basically he's gonna, there you go, take it straight down and you should be able to get that belly. Just remember the rib, there you go, cause you can't go up because of the rib. You're gonna go straight down and remove that belly meat. Look at that, everyone. Perfect. There's not much to it. There's not much to cleaning an alligator gar. You just need to practice, and I promise you we'll get it right. There you go, there's some more meat right there, another slab. So, we'll, it'll stay like that. When we get home, we'll go ahead and clean off that extra nerve and all that good stuff. We'll put it aside and we'll get the other, the other belly meat. There you go, straight down. Perfect. You see? Perfect. Practice makes perfect. I 
and that is it everyone that is how you clean an alligator gar now um for edgar's first time i think he did very good um it's very very difficult for someone being their first time to do something like this but yet edgar edgar did a heck of a job and he got all this meat now it's time to rinse it off pack it up enjoy it and we're gonna feed some more fish And there you have it, everyone. What's up, YouTube? So it's the end of today's fishing trip. We had so much fun. Jesus landed himself a nice, awesome gar. And of course, you saw it. Edgar went down there and he lassoed his gar. He got in the water and he lassoed his gar. We had so much fun today. I wish we had more footage for you all, but you know, we try to get the most out of it. And also, you know, as you saw, Edgar went ahead and he cleaned the alligator guards his first time cleaning an alligator guard all by himself And I think he did a tremendous job. So we had so much fun Jesus landed himself a pretty awesome guard. Jesus. Do you have any words for youtubers for yes. the YouTube? Yes. I want to thank Edgar for last winning the alligator guard and Mark for this awesome f fishing trip You heard it right guys uh, Much uh, appreciate that Jesus. Uh, thanks Edgar, you know teamwork everyone we had fun we came out tonight we did not land a monster but we landed an alligator gar just to show you all that everything's possible if you need any tips any help go to our website lcd956 baitandtackle.com anything you need you can reach out to us contact us you can buy our gear our leaders anything you have to uh to air uh, any questions you have for us go ahead and reach out to us and we'll try to um answer your questions with the most knowledge that we can so we had a pretty awesome day i hope you enjoyed the video for today do not forget to hit the subscribe button it, it is three in the morning we are tired we're ready to go home the alligator gar is super clean it's laying in ice hopefully tomorrow we'll be able to eat some chicharrones so everyone thanks for watching the video I hope to see you on the next video. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button and fish home.